Hello, my name is Sohel Chaudhry, and I'm the Senior Account Manager at SOTI, responsible for Iceland, Denmark, and uh, Southern Sweden. My job is basically helping our strategic partners in Iceland, such as Edico, with our solution here at SOTI, and uh, helping our end customers as well. So the agenda for today is a short introduction of who we are, who our customers are around the world, the SOTI One platform, and then my colleague Frederick will have a demo of SOTI Mobi Control, SOTI Insight, and SOTI Assist. And at the end, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact either myself, Edico, or Frederick as well. So the likelihood is at some point or another, whether you know it or not, you have been in contact with SOTI. Uh, these are some of our customers worldwide. These are big and beautiful brands. Don't be afraid of this because whether you're a small co company or a big company, our solution of enterprise mobility management fits your needs. If we dr drill a little bit further, here are some of our European customers. We should probably remove Halfords and the British brands because they're no longer in the EU, but that's besides the point. If we were go, to go even further, here are some of our Icelandic customers. I created this one, so my apologies that it's not as good as the other ones. In order to deliver our enterprise mobility management, we need to work closely with our strategic partners, such as Google, Apple, Microsoft, and our colleagues at Zebra, in order to ensure that the, and in order to ensure that we can support all the different manufacturers and devices around the world. So. What is the SOTI One platform? It consists of multiple products, such as SOTI Mobi Control, EMM, MDM, UEM. Those are some of the acronyms being used today for SOTI Mobi Control. SOTI Assist is our mobile first help desk. SOTI Insight is basically our data-driven decision-making module. That's how I would call it. And then SOTI Connect is our IoT platform. I will go a little bit further into those and also what the benefits are of the SOTI One platform. Basically, with SOTI One, you can secure and manage all endpoints, whether it's a Linux machine, an iOS device, an Android, Windows, and Mac OS as well. You can also build apps in minutes with our SOTI Snap platform. So if you have a use case where you need to create an app quickly, we can do that as well. We can streamline the critical workflows created by these apps as well. So whether it's offline or online, we can ensure that the apps work, whether it's on an iOS or an Android, as, me as mentioned earlier. And of course, because a lot of companies have a mobile-first strategy, it is imperative that we actually can eliminate mobile downtime ensure that the devices are used correctly and that you can help your users as well in an efficient manner. So SOTI Mobi Control is our EMM tool. This is our bread and butter. This is where we came from. As I mentioned earlier, we can manage Android, iOS, Linux, Mac OS, and Zebra's Link OS printers as well. We can help you with enrolling and staging these devices out of the box, whether it's with uh, Google Zero Touch, Apple DEP, Samsung KME. We can help you set up those devices as well. And of course, our background, as you saw previously with our customers, is the rugged industry. Now, my background is that I came from VMware and AirWatch. And I can honestly say that we are on par with market leaders when it comes to managing devices, whether it is rugged for the blue, blue collar or the white collar devices as well. Of course, when it comes to EMM, we need to secure the device. We need to ensure that the right email is on the device. Apps, content, and configurations are pushed down to the device so the right users can do the right things with the devices as well. And of course, 
when you're using a solution such as this, you need to be able to remote control these devices as well from a support point of view. If someone has a query, someone doesn't know what's happening or there's something wrong with the device, you need to be able to view that very device. Any questions so far, by the way? No? All right. So Salty Snap is our no-code building app platform. I created an app, app uh, yesterday for, uh, uh, for our marketing activity that we're going to have next week in uh, Denmark uh, by dragging and dropping. The form factor is the same, whether it's on iOS and Android, it doesn't really matter. Once you've created the app in Salty Snap and you're using it on an iOS, Android, tablet, it looks and feels the same. We tie into REST APIs that are the standard in this industry. And of course, when you tie into these services, you need to ensure that the, um, whether, you're, whether you are offline or online, you should be able to store the device, store the data, and sync back to these repositories at a later stage. Then there is the SOTI Assist. When you have a mobile first strategy, it is imperative that you have a solution that can help you troubleshoot and log tickets in an easy way. So basically it's a mobile first help desk. You log tickets, you can see what's happening, you can, you can collect ADP logs. And um, my colleague Frederick will show it later as well live. And as mentioned earlier, it works on all platforms as well. And because a lot of organizations already use ServiceNow or other help desk tools as well, we tie into those using APIs. So the Insight is our data-driven decision module. It's basically collecting the data that what, what's happening on your Android devices, which apps are being used more frequently, whether suddenly there's a spike in um, app usage, you can figure out why that is happening, whether there's a, so someone suddenly is connected to a Wi-Fi and the signal is dropping there, suddenly they're switching to 4G or 3G, and you need to figure out what's happening with the device. That's where this comes into play as well. And you can set up notifications to inform you that, hey, the, the battery is draining. Let's investigate as to what's happening and try to contact the relevant support mechanisms to ensure that the devices are actually being used correctly and that there's no mobile downtime. And so to connect is basically our IoT platform. We started with adding support for our printers because that's where we feel that we need to, that's the market we feel we need to address right now. We already have support for Zebra's Link OS, but as of today, we have support for Epson, Sato, Brother printers as well, just to ensure that these printers around, whether it's in a store, whether it's in a retail chain, that you know what's happening with these devices. Normally, IT is further away and can't help in a way they would like, so that's where Salty Connect comes into play. Uh, that was my very short presentation about the platforms, because I genuinely believe that seeing is believing. So I'll hand over to my colleague Frederick, who's, who's coming over shortly, to present, to actually show you Salty Mobile Control, Salty Assist, and Salty Insight. So, uh, this is uh, Mobile Control. This is the latest version, version 15. Uh, has anyone, if, if you have seen Mobile Control, or if you use it in some way, can you raise your hands? Do we have anyone? We have some people there, there. Lovely, lovely. So this is our Nordics demo server. It's very messy. There is a lot of people in here uh, doing different stuff. Mobile control is very simple. You create a folder structure. You can pull the folder structure from your AD or you can create it manually. 
So you can see here we have all these different folders here. Do I have zoom on? Uh, as you can see, this server is quite messy. We have a lot of stuff in here. If I take view all devices, oh, I have a search up here. If I take view all devices, I get a long, long list of all my devices. As Sohail said, we manage Android, iOS, Mac OS, Zebras printers, Android, all Windows, embedded, CE, XP, whatever. So what I can do to find the device that I'm gonna show you today is that I can use the search engine up here. From here I can do a search, and we can search for a lot of variables. Everything we store about the device in the database you can search for. So if we begin, with just typing something. Let's take manufacturer contains zebra, zebra. And then we do a search. So now I have narrowed the field down to all the zebra devices. So you can see here, I even have a couple of printers in here. This search can, can go on. So if I take and agent online is true, then I can find the device that I'm going to show it on today. And this search can go on and on, and you can s save it, and or which devices is Zebra TC57, that has the, this version of this application, and the agent is online. So you can use this as like a reporting. So you can make live reports on your uh, server. Uh, so here we have a device. Let's click it. Uh, on the first page here, you can see all the information about the device. You can search up here as well. So say I want to see which uh, OS version, model, TC51, SSID. I'm on this uh, hotel's Wi-Fi right now. Uh, on the next page, we have configurations. So here I can see which are the configurations that I have pushed out to my device. Uh, I can see that everything is installed, so you're in for a treat. On the next page, applications, just a long list. We have a search coming in this as well, but it's for the next version, 15.1. Long list of all the application and processes that are running on the device. Location, where is this device located right now? So I am, oh, this can't be right. Mm -hmm. I've never been this far from home <laughs> before. Uh, you can locate the device. You can locate a lot of devices at once if you want. Now I'm just locating one. You can create a fence from here, uh, like a fence around the building, around the site and then you can decide what will happen to the device if it enters the fence or if it leaves the fence. So say you have a area where you're not allowed to use the camera on your device, you can turn the camera off when you enter the building and bring it back when you come, when you go out. Uh, one of my first cases uh, when I started Sodi, I've been working for Sodi like five years, uh, was a school in South, South Africa. Now I only do pre-sales for the no Nordics, but when I started, it was everywhere. So they actually used this. So they had tablets, and when they were at school, the device should be on lockdown with only school apps. But when they left school, the lockdown was released, and they could play games and install whatever they wanted. Um, so that's an example on how you can use it. 
Up on the top here, I have some actions. So I can check in the device. I can soft reset the device. Basically, turning the device off and then on again, which is the resolves 90% of all problems, <laughs> usually. Uh, I have more actions as well. So I can, for example, wipe the device, if I can spell wipe. And uh, if I do wipe, I, have, I can bypass the factory reset protection. So this is, you know, if you have your Apple account or your Android account on a device and you factory reset it, when it goes back in, you, uh, you have to enter the code for your account, which is very messy if you are a company and you don't know the code. <laughs> then I'm going to press cancel here, not wipe. Lovely. Uh, one more thing to mention uh, before I start remote controlling the device. This device is enrolled with uh, Android Enterprise Device Owner. It means we have complete control over this device. We can do whatever we, we want to it. And when the device enrolls, it gets a managed Google Play account. Does, can you raise your hand if you know what a managed Google Play account is? <coughs> we have three, four, yeah, we have some, not as many. A managed Google Play account is when this device enrolls, Mobi Control will generate a Gmail service account. You can see here, it's just a long string with like Android for work, gserviceaccount.com. <laughs> when this device hits the Google Play Store, it will not reach the regular Google Play Store. It will reach your Google Play Store, which you have complete control over which applications are in there. You can upload your own applications, but you also have a mirror of the regular Google Play Store where you have to approve of the applications that resides in there. It's very nifty. You don't have to use it if you don't want to. We can push applications to the device without it. But uh, it's nice, especially for uh, uh, public applications. So say you have you use Google Maps and you want it to be updated to the newest version all the time. Then you can set it on auto update and it will just, when the, you, it updates in the real Play Store, it will get pushed down to your devices as well. So, I mentioned briefly before that you assign different rules to the different folders. So down here, I have a dem demo flow for uh, a, a real customer. This would look different. I have named the uh, folders after what happens to the device when you put the device in there. Uh, this could actually reflect your organization, whether it's, a, it's the warehouse, whether it's the front desk or whatever. So that's what we normally recommend. But in this case, yeah. it's Frederick. So for a real customer, it would be like the company name up top and then the different sites or the different regions or like warehouse, stores, store one, store two, and etc. So we can see here that this device is in demo and in staging. So from here, I will launch a remote control of the device. Uh, the device is right here, but now I think the Wi-Fi is a bit slow, well, like that. So uh, this is if you're nifty with your fingers and you have a good Wi-Fi, it's almost like having the device in front of you. Uh, so from here, I can show you what happens when we move the device around. And uh, perhaps something will go wrong. Who knows? Uh, from here, I can see the files of the device. So I, can, I have complete access to the file system of the device. And I can drag and drop files in here. Say you are a developer, you have a new app, 
and you drop some log files on the device, then you can just remote control the device and go in and fetch it manually, or you can set up a rule to go and fetch it at uh, intervals. Uh, let's grab this device and put it into blacklist. Now you see that some applications were removed. And we also got an error message. Hmm, how convenient. This sounds like a job for SOTI Assist. So we will uh, uh, leave the demo for now. And we will go into SOTI Assist. I will embed this problem into a new ac ac incident <laughs> using our uh, ticketing system. Uh, this is how SOTI Assist looks. It's, uh, this is a new uh, ticket. It has the remote control integrated into uh, the ticket. So from here, I can say who was the person that called me or emailed me about this problem. And it was me. Uh, I can enter a subject name. You'll see when you get it along your tickets. So let's say Google Play Store has stopped. Error message. How did, did the ticket come in? Email, chat, self-service, portal, or phone? This, uh, <laughs> it's, we didn't add when you're in front of a present, when you're presenting as an error search. I just, let's take email. I can tag it. App Store, maybe. So you can create a, a database to uh, uh, find problems Maybe someone has had this problem before. I can resolve it. Maybe the next person, person who has this can resolve it more quickly. If I tag it correctly, I'm just going to take something. Uh, scan. I can write the description. But I can also, let's say I take a picture of the device. And the picture will be attached into the ticket. So the next person can see the error message as well. Uh, I am not a, de a developer. I don't read logs. Uh, but I can download the device logs. And when they are done, give it a moment, those two will be attached to the tickets. So someone who reads logs can read it. I can't understand this. It's, look, it's gibberish. Can you understand this? Ah, OK. This means that the notification ion manager, uh, <laughs> it makes no sense to me. But you have the uh, ADB logs. You have the, uh, some logs from mobile control and a crash log. So it is very nifty. Uh, see, can I close this down? Yes, there we are. I can record video on the device with or without sound so the user can explain uh, when we talk. Now it's fairly obvious, the, but uh, I can record a video of the device and then attach that to the ticket as well. I can draw on the screen. Look here. Uh, I can switch it to a whiteboard if I just want some sort of a drawing area. Uh, the uh, person who is holding the device can, oh, hello, uh, can, uh, draw as well, and they have a different uh, color then, so you can see it. I am going to stop this, disable drawing.
Um, yeah, and of course you can take pictures with those arrows as well, if you want. When I'm done with my ticket, I can submit it as uh, pending, open, or resolved. I'm going to submit it as open. And since this is a demo server, not many tickets have. <laughs> you can see we have a lot in draft, we have a lot in open and in pending, and 79 overdue. Oh my god. So now you can see the uh, ticket up here, and the next person can enter it and have all the in information, and the device is still here as well. Let's get back to the demo. Now when we have that sorted out. Uh, I'm going to close this down. I'm going to open the remote control again. There we are. What I did was I blacklisted some applications. It looked for you like they were removed. They were never removed, so now you can see them start coming back. They were never removed, but uh, you just don't allow them to run to the CPU, so it looks like they're gone. The device is not aware of them, so it looks like they're gone. This is, of course, very nifty if you have something that you don't want to run on your devices. It can be a process, something that chugs battery, or uh, some application that you don't want the users to uh, uh, to use. Uh, we can block apps, we can block processes. If it has a process in Android, we can block it. You can do it with blacklist. These applications are not allowed. Or with whitelist, only these applications are allowed. Deployment. I'm going to move it into deployment. It's going to install an application. I believe it's going to come somewhere around here. Uh, it's a Firefox Focus. I've shown. Oh no, this is jumping around. I've shown. I have chosen it because it's very small, <laughs> so you can push it over a hotel Wi-Fi. There it is. So I installed an application. This is not from the Google Play Store. This is just, you take the APK and you push it down to the device and you just accept all the permissions that it has. Uh, and the same here, so you get the drift. When I move the device back into staging, this application will go away. But now it's gone. Now the other apps were still there, but this was actually uninstalled and removed. I believe you can even see... Firefox Focus, deleted by your administrator in the, in the top here. Uh, next part is a lockdown or kiosk mode. You saw a lockdown from Bonus, I believe. Uh, I'm going to put it here, I think. This one is the prettiest. Uh, a lockdown is a is a web page, a HTML based web page that you pull above the device. So this is one we did for a event with PostNord. I cannot do this. It's made with some sort of a program, but it's a HTML template. So you, and all lock, lockdowns lockdowns can be made to look and feel however you like. Only your HTML skills sets the difference. Uh, if I try to pull down the status bar down here, I can't because it's disabled. So I can't access the settings of the device or break into the device. I even have some information down here. I don't know if you can read that. But it basically says IP, and then the IP address, and the device name. So this is uh, not a static value. Say, for example, if I change the name of it, rename, I'm just going to name it Fredrik. 
and then we move back to the lockdown, the name will change. So a user who calls in, I can say, oh, hi, uh, which device are you on? I have Zebra 0017. And then you can search for the device in mobile control and start remote controlling the user and helping him out. So from here, I can open uh, applications. This is our settings manager, which is basically a settings program that so you can allow some settings in the lockdown, since you don't have access to pull the status bar down. The most common use case for this is to have Bluetooth. So you can pair like a printer or a headset or a ring scanner or whatever to your device. But when I press home or back, I always end up back here. I cannot break out of the device. Um, so that is my demo for mobile control. Do we have any questions? We can take them later at the boot if you want. We will be standing right outside. You can drag this device around with me live if you want. Uh, and I'm going to show you one more product, which is Soti Insight. Soti Insight. So this, now we only manipulated one of our devices. Insight is an agent that you push down to the device that gathers additional information. Some information you can get from mobile control, some you can't, but this is mainly to uh, visualize how is your device fleet feeling uh, on a... So I have these graphs. So I have selected the battery status. I have battery status, application usage, data usage, and location. So for example, if I scroll down here, I can see that I have some, some devices that has a dis discharge rate of 20% per hour. That's a lot. That will not last you to the end of the day. If I start up here, I can perhaps I want to see my Samsung devices. If I press Samsung here, then all these graphs will drill down. So now I only see my Samsung devices. Then I have the different models here. S10 Plus, Galaxy Note 8. I can see here that I have 28.6% who has a good battery and 50% bad. So if I press on bad, then all these will it will drill down. So here I can see I have 57% who is too cold. 42% are too hot. You can see how they're charged, when they're charged, charge level at 8 a.m. 8 a. So you can see, of course, when you have a store, you want all your devices to be at the 100% when the store opens. If you only have 9%, no, sorry. <laughs> uh, so this is how many you have uh, at 100%. Uh, and this is how many that is not charged. Which applications are draining uh, uh, the battery of the device? Is it an app that is in foreground or is it something in the system that drains it? So here, for example, if I find something here, if I find, say, Facebook or some game or something, then I can get back into mobile control. Then I know, oh, some users, they know how to open Facebook on my devices. Let's go back to mobile control and remove it so they can't use it. And at the bottom here, you can see uh, the devices. 
So you drill down, and at the bottom you can see your devices. Uh, Insight is integrated with the mobile control. You need mobile control to run it. Uh, you need mobile control to push down the agent uh, to the devices. Any questions on Insight? Let's meet at the boot. Uh, that was it for me. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you.